G'day, my name's Simon and I've also been called Captain Australia and one or two other things. And on the 26th of December 2021, I set out from King George Square in Brisbane and I walked in one continuous journey to Melbourne, Federation Square, where I arrived on the 19th of March 2022. So it was a journey spanning 84 days, all by myself. Started out sleeping rough, uh, camping in the bush in the scrub. I had a hammock and a tarp and it was basically a quest. It was to rebuild hope and fix a broken life. And uh, I think this video, the main benefit of it is showing that, that a broken life can be fixed. So I've promised to come back, although I took a bunch of wild streams during the walk, they were pretty chaotic and it didn't really tell the story. So I promised to come back and record this and narrate it. So you are, if you'll just excuse me, Bop bop a diddly, bop bop a diddly, bop bop a diddly tea. It's the Captain Australia TV show, episode one. Yeah, you are watching the bop bop a diddly Captain Australia TV show. So episode one is a bit of a downer episode, I'm afraid, because it's all about the underlying motivation that got me to start this walk. So I'm, look, I'm just a normal Brisbane dad, you know? Well, maybe normal's not the right word. But I, were, I was diagnosed in 2016 with a stage four squamous cell carcinoma of the head and neck, the big C cancer. So I was given six months to live. And if we look at the pictures, you can see there was this horrible, grueling treatment. I had a, a tube surgically inserted into my stomach for feeding, which I relied on for about five or six months. It was a, it was a mess, it was an ordeal. And, and one of the themes of the walk is that no child no child should have to go through what I did. It broke me. And I was a grown man. Uh, I, I wouldn't say in my prime, but you know, I was, I was reasonably strong. I had financial backing and the love of my family. And it broke me. Because cancer is not just a disease of the body. It attacks the mind, the spirit, your relationships. And even though I, I beat the disease, so I don't still have cancer, I beat it. But it's insidious the way it tries to dig its claws into your life and suck the hope and happiness and joy away. So, you know, you find yourself doing things because of cancer, wonderful things. If I was taking a holiday, it was because of, you know, I survived cancer, so I should be living to the fullest. If I was exercising, it's because I survived cancer and I should be living to the fullest. So cancer is defining the terms and dictating what I should and should not be doing. Not my own joy, not the love that I have for my family, cancer. So over the four years subsequent to treatment, I, I slowly fell to pieces. I was in existential crisis. I was waiting to die. And that's when I made this video. So we'll start it up. In it, I come out and I basically, it was the moment I found hope. And I made this declaration. I made myself accountable to myself, to a charity, and to you. So I, I was walking home from school, sunny day, and I remembered a walk that I took as a child. I was 15 years old, and I left home to escape a bad domestic situation. And it was like going from darkness to hope. It was like leaving the hospital room where you were doomed to die and stepping out into the cool, beautiful air, and you're whole and healed. It was like that. And... I started to weave hope around the idea that I could rebuild myself, get past all of the problems that I was facing if I did that again. So that's where the idea of the big walk started. So I recorded this and it's really cringy, but let's take a little bit of a look. I was given six months to live. I had a 40 to 60% chance that chemo radiation would kill the cancer. And I got lucky. But there's no lucky with cancer, not really. Okay, let's pause it there for a second. So I think you can see just how broken that guy is, right? And we'll fast forward through and I'll show you at the end, like I come out after 30 days. What, what this did, it allowed me to breathe a little bit of hope into my life and I used that and I built on it and I decided to be of service, help a charity called the Kids Cancer Project. So it's all on that basic idea that no child should ever have to endure what I did. And if we fast forward a little bit, yeah, you see at the end I come out and even over a span of 30 days, 
and then another 30 days, there's profound change. And that's what hope can do. And that's the whole idea behind the big walk, that hope can change a life and that a broken life can be fixed. And that's what I set out to do. That was the basis of my quest and the underlying motivation. So at first I took these videos and the idea, look, let's, let's pop a few up so they can play while I talk. The idea behind the, the video recordings was, I mean, also to help the charity, to kind of promote a public interest, to try and get you to look and see merit in what I was doing and support the charity. But first and foremost, it was for my children. So I thought cancer could still come back and kill me. And I thought about it almost every day. And this was like a living diary, a way to candidly show my kids who their dad was, what mattered to him, and you know, capture those moments so that they, even as adults later in life, could come back and look and go, oh yeah, you know, my dad loved me so much. Or my dad just didn't give up. He fought, he fought, he did his best, you know? And I didn't expect it to go the way that it did. And we'll cover all of the streams in later episodes, yeah? But the whole idea of it was to talk true. It was just me, it was by myself. And I felt that to give my children that, that, that view of who I was and what I did and why, I had to just be authentic about it. And then in doing that, people started watching. And I think they then saw the truth in those messages that we've been talking about, that hope can, can empower change in a broken life, yeah? Anyway, so first and foremost, I had to get my Buffhead superhero uniform sorted, yeah? So I was gonna walk from Brisbane to Melbourne and I was gonna do it dressed like this. So this is the end outcome. It's, it's taken a bit of a beating, yeah? But um, let's look at, here's, a, here's an early concept sketch. Look, control, beep. So the, here's a sketch of, uh, this is the initial concept of, of um, the uniform, yeah? So it's like a, a white tee, military uniform over the top of that, and by far the hardest thing was the hood. So um, here's some early videos where I, I created this flag that I carried around with me throughout the walk, and um, there's some early generations of the hood, yeah? So you can see it's like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Struggled so much with that, but my wife Jennifer, uh, came out and fixed it up. And what, <laughs> I'll never forget. So when she's helping sew the thing together, she says to me, what about your cape? And I'm like, Captain Australia doesn't wear a cape. And she says, how are you going to fly? So I think there might be, she might still think I am, actually am a superhero. I don't know. But yeah, the, um, the, these streams, it's me getting out in Brisbane, dressed up, practicing, trying to stimulate a bit of awareness and a bit of support for the charity. And I realized people weren't necessarily taking it seriously. So I, I had to show that I came to play, that I'm, I, I'm not a joke. So the first thing that I did that was, was significant, I did a walk to and from Wellington Point. So let's take a little look at that. Picture today is September the 12th, which uh, is uh, September 11 overseas. It's the anniversary of those mad bastards trying to crash the planes into buildings all over America. Disgusting, appalling inhuman evil as far as I'm concerned I don't hesitate to say it politics religion beliefs I mean it's all fine we beliefs in my opinion are like rectums we all have one they are unique to us we really shouldn't <laughs> compare them or spend too much time looking at other people's concentrate on your own keep it clean <laughs> Actually, this metaphor kind of works. Yeah, keep it clean. Look after it. You know, make sure you use it regularly, not to eliminate waste. Use it regularly. And at the end of the day, you have to just accept that yours is yours and other people will have theirs and you respect that. So don't go hurting people. Don't go plowing planes into buildings. Don't judge people because your faith in theirs is different because nobody knows we are all here in one magnificent jumbled tribe we are all human at our core we all know right from wrong sorry i didn't mean to point you into a random speech now this wellington point walk and in fact all the practice walks that i did over the following months were really about learning the gear learning how to live stream learning how to set a camera up on my pack, 
So I bought all the gear from this place called Valhalla Outdoor and Tactical on, on the north side in Inogra in Brisbane. Um, the gear is great. The pack, the boots, all great. And I was becoming, you know, the dag with the bag and the flag. So I was walking around with the flag up, trying to get awareness for the charity. And um, so Wellington Point, that was 60, 50? 55k I think so 26k out and 26k back yeah yeah okay and and there I am and look this, this walk was great too I, I came across this little gas pipe uh, across a like a swamp it was uh, Dairy Creek Swamp or something it was called and this little pipe and a road which just stopped in the middle of nowhere it up and crapped itself so I actually dressed like this with my flag up, chose to balance over this narrow little gas pipe to get to the other side. And that sort of was the first moment of, you know, what is wrong with you, dude, sort of adventure that I had in the big walk, but there were others. So this, let's look at this. This is a, a walk that I did from Ipswich. So it's only like 35K, I think, practice walk. But uh, there's one point. So I'm walking down the side of the road and um, I'm up on a sort of a mountain overlooking the Brisbane River, and um, I realized the road becomes unsafe, uh, which is laughable given the road that I covered on the actual big walk. So it's nowhere near as unsafe or, or shady or dodgy as some of the road that I, that I later walked. But I thought, hmm, okay, let's find a way around this. And I looked down and I saw this sort of steep hill about like a, I don't know, more than 45 degree incline and uh, I thought well you know I can probably slide down that on my big magnificent bum so w let's watch that and I, I did do that and there's a pathway along the river which I believe ends up at a park down the about a k or so down the road and down here probably looks deceptively not steep but it's actually kind of steep is uh, an alternative route so, what we can do is like a rock, scissors, paper, choose one path or the other. I've got three options. I jump the barrier here and walk down the right side towards oncoming traffic in the breakdown lane, highly visible, pretty safe. I continue on this side of the uh, barrier, dealing with the trees and the, the loose ground and all the rest. Or, like a maniac, I go sliding down this hill. That's option. That's my last option. Now my wife would. <laughs> yeah, she kicked me in the butt for this. So if you're watching Jenny, you know I just. Oh look, this beautiful um, in the river down there, this one. So I'm going to put it in like a first-person camera. I'm going to tuck you onto my chest. Now you won't be able to see these swans. I'll try and zoom in. No, it doesn't let me zoom in. So that doesn't look steep, but it's about I'll say. A 60 degree incline. So I've tucked you into my chest, so you should be able to see. I'm not going to pull the banner down because it's just too much of a pain in the butt. I am just going to slip, oh, slip and slide down like a massive water slide, Captain Australia. How's that? Hey, oh, it's really working. Uh, Riding down on my big old bum. So the cost of this one is prickles and laundry. Uh-oh. And loss of dignity. You're still there. Camera's still there. Yep. Loss of dignity as people see me doing it, which I didn't realize there was people. Okay. So that's the steep and slippery part. The rest we can probably just carefully walk down. Don't want to fall. So we're going to take it nice and down on the bum again. Slippery, slippery. Good day. Oh, they think I'm bonkers. Which I may very well be. And, oh! This pack is heavy. Uh, okay, you're still there with me. I haven't died yet. More than halfway down. Well, you just got to watch for suspicious holes and 
rocks and chipping hazards and all of that. Uh, so far, so good. Slow and steady wins the race, Captain Australia. Okay. Down we go. And there's another iffy bit coming up. And we'll turn and have a look back. Uh, I'll pull you out and... Oh, that's, that's where we've come. Sliding down on our magnificent bum. And uh, getting looks, as you would. And down here, okay, there's a bit of a rock and a jump. We do not want to break an ankle or do anything too silly. So, slow and steady. Uh, clear as snakes, doesn't look too bad. Snake risk looks pretty low. There we go. Navigated that bit. And now we're almost down. Oh! Okay, got another little jump here. Again, low risk, bang, bang. Okay. Don't want to do anything too stupid. G'day. How you doing? <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm streaming to the world as well at the moment. So what would have been perfect is uh, if, if you'd saved that till right when I got to the, to the bottom. <laughs> I was walking down the road. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm, in fairness, I am practicing for a very long and significant walk, Brisbane to Melbourne, and there's going to be unexpected shit along the way, but this pretty clearly reveals, <laughs> oh God, my absolute buff-headed, never think things through stupidity, doesn't it? Um, so th does that just go to the start of where the road, yeah. <laughs> So I actually walked right past the footpath too, yeah. I walked directly past it, and I got halfway down the road, and I thought, you know, this road's getting nippy. Yeah, let's go down the hill. <laughs> Having walked straight past the bloody footpath. Un Unbelievable. Okay, now we might go down onto our magnificent bum again, just for this bit, because we don't want to risk a broken am ankle. Sorry, I don't narrate to myself in my head. I'm streaming the... It's all for a charity walk to Melbourne. Captain Australia's big walk. And hey, let me show you where you've come, people. Oh, what happened? There we are. So that's the hill between feet and bum and other bits we managed to get down, and that's the path we could have walked down. <laughs> Pretty good stuff. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you. I am delighted to have given a giggle, boys. And so the joke at the end is, I get down to the bottom, and unbeknownst to me, looking up to the left, there's an actual path. So I could have gone walking down, and there were these guys down the bottom, they're like, hey, <laughs> you know. And again, that sort of set the tone for the later walk as well. Just a buffhead, doing the best that he can, making mistakes, and having an adventure, yeah. So I did um, practice walks, Wellington Point, Ipswich, down from Redcliffe, which was like 40k or so. Um, and that got me on, on the project. So, well, you know, it got there was a level of awareness enough that thankfully the media took notice. And uh, yeah, so I got on the project and maybe we should watch that full thing. It's, I think it's a, great, it's a great explanation of what I was trying to do, what I set out to do. And this was before I'd actually done anything. So let's take a look. I say not all heroes wear capes and that's a lovely sentiment, but you're about to meet a local legend who likes to dress the part as well. This is Captain Australia. 
G'day, Captain Australia here. He's getting ready to embark on one hell of a journey. On the 26th of December, I'm going to walk from Brisbane to Melbourne, dressed as the Buffhead superhero Captain Australia. One continuous walk, sleeping rough, no vehicles, no help. Now you might be wondering, what's with the superhero get up? 2008 was when I first did it, and I did it for about five years. And it was in reaction to a growing darkness that I saw in the world. Captain Australia, I retired when my, my second son uh, became ill. I didn't know what Captain Australia really was for except to fight a darkness, but he's actually come back to save my life. In recent years, Simon's taken on the fiercest of foes. He was diagnosed with stage four head and neck cancer in 2016. My cancer diagnosis was a real blow. So I was given six months to live and I have three young children. Sorry, I, my, my youngest son was three years old when I was diagnosed, three years old. So you have to deal with the idea of abandoning them. When you're a father, your job is to teach your children to be there for them, to nurture them. And that's the only job that matters to me as a human being, more than anything else that I could do with my life. So the idea of abandoning those children, it broke my heart. So I fought, I fought as hard as I could, but cancer's a tricky enemy. He fought and he won. But some of the hardest days were often spent in waiting rooms, seeing young children wait for their cancer treatment. I, I can't really articulate why it affected me so deeply, but I, I found it to be an offence, like profoundly offensive, like wrong. And I just couldn't abide it. And I stored that away in the back of my mind. It has nothing to do with me, with my own children. It's just a fundamental thing that is wrong in the world. That's why he decided to team up with the Kids Cancer Project, a charity embracing bold science to improve childhood treatments. I knew that it wasn't just for me, that I could do something more, and I wanted to do that. And that's what led me to the Kids Cancer Project and their incredibly important cause which is to resolve paediatric cancer in our lifetime. When it came to how Simon would raise the money, he knew what he needed to do. When I got through my cancer treatment, I was broken, deeply broken, and I didn't know what to do and I didn't know how to fix myself. And it was just that muscle memory, that remembering how hope felt and that it was walking that took me to it. In my past, when I was 15 years old, I walked from Brisbane to Sydney it was to escape a bad domestic situation and I had to escape. I slung a pack over my shoulder and I left. I walked from Brisbane to Sydney to live with my grandmother who I adored and leaving and moving towards that hope and I needed that again. That was his first big walk. Since then it's safe to say he's walked 500 miles. I've been walking 10, 15, 20 kilometres every day for the last eight or nine months. Over the weekend, Simon walked from Brisbane to the Gold Coast to get his Ks up. 90 Ks to be exact. Yeah, I've been going for about three hours now. I, I would have thought I'd be a little bit tired, but I'm going strong. It was instructive. I learned a lot. I have blisters all over my feet, but they're healing nicely. And I, I'm quite proud of the effort I did. All in preparation for the real big walk on December 26, a day that holds great importance. It's the same time of the year that I took my big walk as a child. Secondly, it's my birthday. And like the Hobbit Bilbo Baggins, you set out on a big quest on your 111st birthday. Lastly, it's the, the fifth anniversary of my cancer treatment. So my last treatment was on the 24th of December, five years ago. For Simon, this is more than just a long walk. For me, the big walk, it's a metaphor for hope. Hope of my own personal healing, hope that we can eradicate paediatric cancer in our lifetimes. It's about taking broken things and fixing them. So I hope you'll join me in my big walk. Yeah, what a what determined a... individual he is. Amazing. Yeah. Eliminating paediatric cancer, wouldn't that be a day? Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. He's so right sitting there in a, in a waiting room and seeing children come through, the injustice of it, mm. that, you know, I can see exactly what he's talking about. There's just something about it that's not OK. Yes, you know? and you can see he's fueled by something yeah. that's bigger than anything that can be contained rationally. Or It's mm. like it, this is just an inherent truth mm. that he's, he's marching for. So if you want to get behind Captain Australia's big walk for the Kids Cancer Project, you can head to our website if you want to donate.
So once I got on the project, we started to see some donations coming in. I think there was like ten, twelve thousand dollars that night, and um, it, it showed me that the most important thing was to earn your regard, to do my best, to be honest, but. That was in the hopes that it would stimulate some media awareness. And every time the media became aware of what I was doing and chose to cover it, the charity made money. So the whole superhero thing, I don't think I'm Batman. It's a statement. It's about saying we can lift ourselves up. We can live to values that shouldn't be dismissed as comic book. We don't need to be thieves. We don't need to be selfish. We don't need to be egocentric morons. We, we can lift each other and ourselves up. So it's, a, it's aspirational. It's about saying, you know, there's a hero inside of us. Why not let them out? Live to those values. But yeah, anyway, every time I got on the telly, it was because of the superhero gear, because of the undertaking that I had chosen to do. And it was great for the charity. So I tried my best. And later, I was able to get on the Today Show. So you had Carl and Ali interviewing me. And that was more of a funny one. So let's take a look at that. Breaking news, breaking news, breaking news. Our next guest is the green and gold superhero who's the stuff of legend in the River City. Take a look. We first met Captain Australia a decade ago, a masked man of mystery. The green and gold defender of Brisbane, whose agile moves and super swift skills helped keep the streets of Fortitude Valley safe. How are you going? doing the best job ever. G'day mate, how you doing? You're my hero, have I ever told you my hero? Did you ever know that you're my hero? <laughs> the crime-fighting crusader hung up his boots a few years back, but now he's making a triumphant return, dusting off his tight suit, roaming the streets of the River City once more. But this time, he's preparing for an almighty quest, a 2,000-kilometre journey from Brisbane to Melbourne. Whew, I feel we are safe again, and we're pleased to say Captain Australia joins us live from his lair in Brisbane. His Good lair. morning, Captain, Captain Australia. G'day, Carl. G'day, Ali. How are you doing today? <laughs> well. Well, it's good to see the suit still fits. That's great. <laughs> Hey, mate, after my fight with cancer, I gained 60 kilos, buddy. I was clinically obese. So this is dead sexy weight loss, my friend. No, hey, I agree. It's totally sexy, you, my friend. She likes that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> tell, us about, <laughs> tell us about the decision to come back. Not easy, even though you had such a big impact on the world before. OK, look, it's, I, I got a stage four cancer in 2016 and as part of my recovery, I decided to uh, take a big walk just for my own personal healing. But then I realised I could do it for a charity. So kindness is the antidote for suffering. I hated seeing kids waiting for treatment, going through the same ordeal that I did. So I found the Kids Cancer Project, massively important charity, 950 Aussie kids diagnosed every year. It's just not on. So I decided to help them and take Captain Australia's big walk, Whoa. which you can Google and you'll find. Yeah, but bas basically it was, those were my motivations. That's what it's about. I'm going to walk from Brisbane to Melbourne on the 26th of December. It will take me somewhere between eight to 10 weeks. My other motivation really is just how cool I look in the costume. We're talking Fonzie level cool. Yeah. Oh mate, we, we're seeing it and we're hey. loving it. I yeah. love this though. This is a really beautiful thing that you're doing. Um, t I mean, but that, that's a big trek, my Thank friend. You, that's a very big walk. It, it, it is, and I'm going to be sleeping rough, so we're not talking luxury hotels or anything. Oh. I left home when I was 15 years old. As a child, I walked from Brisbane to Sydney. It was to escape a bad domestic situation. That was a big walk, and it was about healing. It was about hope. It was like leaving the hospital room where you expected to die. I needed that again. So I'm trying to recreate that in my own life, but then use it in service of a very important charity. All right, give us your best pose. Give us your best pose. <laughs> this is Captain Australia, oh. everyone. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. I'm, I'm sorry, Carl. That's the, that's all I got, mate. Yeah. Um, I'm not, I'm not about enough. the superhero stuff. Oh. The bathroom is that away. <laughs> Sounds like you need to go. 
Yeah, you're, all, you're very turned on now. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this kind of thing does it for I'll me. I'll play that one, Carl. That was good. Okay, Captain was Australia, you're yeah. doing a lot to, to mm. raise smiles and also now money. Donate or follow his epic journey on Facebook. Captain Australia. Good luck, my friend. Hopefully friends. we don't see you anytime soon. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. A genuine pleasure. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Cheers. What a legend. Oh, proper legend, isn't he? Good nice, luck with that. Huh? That is a big walk, though. Massive. You know, but get behind it. Check yeah. out his Facebook page. We love it. Yeah, so at this point, um, it was getting uh, November. I had maybe a month or so until the walk. I, I realized I needed backup uniforms. I only had the one. Uh, so I started to sort that out and if you look at the picture you'll see the concepts that we had so there was a like a dark ninja one and the idea was I could pop a button and I'd light up like a Christmas tree but it didn't quite work out um, and there was the desert warrior one which was sort of lightweight and more breezy and then there's a the wet weather one that was treated to resist water and uh, yeah, so I worked with this wonderful lady who just reached out onto the Facebook page and said, look, I'm a seamstress and I'd love to help you sort out some backup uniforms. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't want to embarrass her, but her name was Ray, is Ray, <laughs> and she's absolutely lovely and I'll be forever indebted to her for her kindness. Uh, so, you know, I bought all the gear for that and she helped sew it all together. So I now had four uniforms and um, yeah, I'd done all my practice walks and conceived of this idea of a daily donor dare of doom. So I made a video to explain what it was, and that's probably easier if we just look at that. So hang on, we'll take a quick look. G'day citizens, this is Captain Australia, and I'm here to talk about the big wall, pow, for the Kids Cancer Project, blam! I survived cancer, kids shouldn't have to. And you can donate today, whammo! Okay, now that stuff, that's staying there. That's some subliminal stuff, you need to let your eyes travel to it. Donate today to the big walk for the Kids Cancer Project. Donate today to the big walk for the Kids Cancer Project. Donate today to the big walk for the Kids Cancer Project. Okay, now today I'm gonna to tell you all about the Daily Donut Dares of Doom. What's that? It's a chance for you to let your inner supervillain out, okay? So, if you donate $50 or more to the charity, you get to make a Daily Donut Dare of Doom. So step one, practice your maniacal laugh, of course. So, this is my version. <laughs> I'm going to get you, Captain Australia. <laughs> okay, that done, after you make your donation, there's a message box. So in there you type cap I dare you to. Every single day, Facebook live streams, I will do my best. Your dare becomes my mission, okay? I don't want to be mean to people, I don't want to be mean to groups, I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, okay? Um, I don't want to break the law and I don't want to die. But except for that, Go for it. And it's all for a worthy cause, the Kids Cancer Project. So my fight with cancer, all the side effects that are gonna follow me for the rest of my life, it breaks my heart that children have to survive that. So, oh, what's that down there? Remember, donate today to the big walk for the Kids Cancer Project. Thanks so much for your time. Jump online and give me a dare. And do all the like and subscribe and all of that stuff if you want to. You don't have to. See you later. <laughs> yeah, so, hey, uh, I can't afford therapy. A anyway, I, I did start to get these daily donor dares in as well. So, um, well, the first ones were mainly about singing. There was one that was just run, fatty, run. 
So I, with the pack on and all the gear, I ran 5K or something. But most of them were about singing. Like one of the first Daily Donor Dares of Doom was Song You Are Playlist. And I assumed they just wanted me to sing a random song from my playlist. So surreal as it is, I find myself walking down South Bank, Bank singing. And the song that came up was, well, it's a lovely song, uh, Higher Love by Steve Winwood. And then after that, I got another one like um, to sing Daryl Braithwaite's The Horses. So let's just take a musical interlude and have a look at them. Without it, life is wasted time. Look inside your heart, I'll look inside mine. And you will free the beautiful bird that's caught inside your heart. Can't you hear her as she cries so loud? So that's a wild note over water and cloud. And that's the way it's going to be, little darling. You'll be riding on the horses, yeah, yeah. Way up in the sky, little darling. And if you fall, I'll pick you up. I'll pick you oh. up. PTSD. Um, I got one Captain Australia's Big Booty. We won't watch the whole video, uh, but we'll jump to the end. And uh, yeah, it's uh, so somebody, a, a shoey. I was there to do a shoey, but I wear boots, so it was my big, my big booty. Uh, and a shoey, if you don't know, it's like race car drivers when they win the race, their shoe gets filled with champagne and they chug that down. So in my case, it was water, which is actually alcohol would have been better because it gets rid of all of the yucky yuck um, or kills the bacteria. So yeah, let's have a look at that. Tinea, can you get tinea in your mouth? I don't know. Okay. These boots are the same type worn by the SAS. They are bloody marvellous in terms of... Uh, now... That is the same boot. We have not modified the boot. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, there we go. Pretty nasty looking. Would you agree, sir, that looks nasty? He's nodding. You don't want to smell it, do you? No, he doesn't want to smell it. Nobody wants to smell this. Oh, gee, I don't, I don't actually want to do this at all. For some people, this might be nothing, you know, but if you, you've got like uh, different people have different sensitivities and some people, this is disgusting. I get that it's sort of like a mateship ritual, so that's all good. Oh God, there's stuff in there. Uh, it's better with vodka because it kills the bacteria. This is water. Okay, here we go. I don't know if you can see, that's a boot full of water. It's leaking a little, but it gets stuck in. Okay. Valhalla! Oh, Jesus Christ. Forgive me if saying Jesus Christ is offensive. I'm an old man. I respect you. I respect all faiths. Oh, this is horrible. Oh. Now I got every last little bit except for the spillage. Oh, all right. <clears throat> A lovely old couple just walked past and the look on their face. It's not, it's not quite disgust, it's not quite contempt, it's not quite confusion, it's like a blend of all of those things. Oh, I don't know what monkey butt tastes like, mate, but I think it probably tastes something like that. Oh, yeah, but still, done. So that is one dare, honourably done. Why? It's for the Kids Cancer Project. It's for your enjoyment too. If you had a giggle out of that, I, am, I could not be more delighted. Uh, but yeah, so the Kids Cancer Project, if you want to check that out, please, sticky post, like, all that stuff. I, I'm no good at all that social media stuff, but it would be it would be a wonderful, good deed if you took a look. And if you don't, no worries. I hope you had fun. Uh, that was... Oh, I think I need to sit down. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. Ugh, yeah, let's kill this stream tragic. before I... So, I, spew. I was walking around the city. I had my flag up. I had spare uniforms, uh, and I was just putting in time, trying to get seen. Why? To attract the public's attention so that people would know that I was taking this walk and that the charity would make a chunk of money from it. So the walk, again, it was a personal ordeal. It was a pilgrimage. It was about healing. But I really wanted to do a great job for the charity. And as, as 
there became a higher level of public awareness, I started to get these requests. So I, I got written to by this uh, Oncology Mum Support Network down at the Gold Coast and made a great friend there, Helen, who runs it. Uh, so I went down and visited them. Um, I had the, the privilege of meeting people affected by paediatric cancer, which gave me a deeper understanding of the charity and, and why it was so important. So for me, it was academic, you know, uh, it was fighting the problem at the core. So we're not dealing with um, the people who are already sick, I guess. It's about, you know, making sure that the treatments in the future are as strong as possible. There are 950 Aussie kids every year diagnosed with a form of paediatric cancer. These are cancers that attack only children, yeah? and. I, I started to meet some of these kids and we'll talk about Archer and Haley and some kids that I met during the walk in later episodes. But for me, when I went down and visited these oncology mums and I was introduced as, uh, this is Captain Australia and he's going to make paediatric cancer sexy again or something like that. You know, I, I'm not going to make anything sexy. I think it was like marketing talk about how we're going to, you know, make a topic that is grim and horrible accessible. Yeah. But yeah, I had my uniforms, I was all ready, I was all good to go, and I was just doing time and uh, waiting for 26th of December, which was my birthday, and the day that I would set out on my quest. So I'd been on the telly, I'd been on, I'd been on the uh, Today Show and the project, and I needed to get vaccinated in preparation too. I had horrible adverse reactions to my jab. Um, I can't tell you why, and I don't want that to discourage you from any sort of vaccination or whatnot but I had these leg cramps that lasted five days, high intensity, middle of the night, had to get some scans to make sure I, I wasn't having DVT. And the second jab, I went deaf in my right ear. So I had to have a scan and they said, look, you've got brain cancer. So I had to have an MRI to confirm that. And it was actually inf inflammation to a vein in the back of my head that gave like a false positive. So I dodged that bullet. I only found out about that in the last week before the walk. And it was a little bit iffy. Like I might've had to have set out on the walk, not knowing whether or not I still had a type of cancer. But yeah, it was just an adverse thing from my jab. So I was all ready, good to go. And I think that's where we'll leave this episode. So the next episode will pick up on the first day of the walk. I set out and it'll cover the first seven days, which has me down to the Gold Coast, into, across Tweed Heads and across the border, and then into New South Wales, and, and probably a good 100K into New South Wales, maybe, or 50. So we'll cover that in the next episode. I hope this format works for you. I'm just a buffet figuring it out one step at a time. But yeah, the, um, the big walk again, for me, it was a pilgrimage of personal healing. It was to help a charity called the Kids Cancer Project. There are three children every week dying from pediatric cancer and it's just not on. No child should have to endure what I did. And then it became about us. So it was less my big walk and it was about this, this sense of hope. The idea that rebuilding a broken life, fixing something that's been fundamentally wrecked and making it positive and constructive and good is possible and available. And people started to respond for that, to that. So I'm hoping that in the later episodes, we'll flesh some of that out and we'll see some real examples and maybe have a few giggles as well. So my name's Simon. I'm also called Captain Australia and one or two other things. Thank you so much for your time and interest. All the very best. G'day, Simon here. Uh, so I'm just outside the Royal Hospi Brisbane Hospital. Uh, I have just had my five year oncology review and they've discharged me from the hospital. So uh, I just wanted to share the outcome, which it's a good one. So I had stage four cancer. Uh, I was diagnosed five years ago. Uh, it, it was uh, six months to live was the proposition. Uh, 40 to 60% cancer curative treatment. Uh, today it's been formally declared that um, uh, I, have, I have had total metabolic response to that treatment. Curative treatment was a success, so they used the word cured. My malignancy has been cured. So I don't have cancer anymore, and technically they also use words like remission. Once you've had cancer, you know, it kind of keeps you, keeps you in the mindset that, that it could come back. But yeah, I have had total curative treatment, and that treatment was a success. So uh, yeah, I'm feeling pretty chuffed about that. Um, but now I'm going to sort of superhero up and take a walk through the city and see if I can drum up some support for the charity. So it's all about the Kids Cancer Project. And uh, 
Oh, sorry, someone just joined. So I'm in the clear. Uh, I just had my five-year oncology review, and um, they they said that I've had total me metabolic response to treatment, and they considered me cured, and I've been discharged. So I'm now in the care of my GP. Um, I'm still deaf in, in my right ear, but that's an inflammatory response to the vaccine. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go... And... Oh, there we go. I'm going to put this gear on and take a walk through the city.